It's not like like if you hammer a nail into a board, you fucking are very aware you did that. Yeah. You're very aware. But there's something about the creative process that's not – you're n- not totally there. It's weird. Yeah, it, because it is you and it isn't you. Right. It, it, it was you – even me and I love it. We always hear it too in sports. It's like you know, oh, you know, uh, you know, how to go today, Federer? Oh, I was out of my mind. I was not in my mind. It was a beautiful day, and I think you saw the results. <laughs> yeah, you know, sure, fluid, yeah. effortless, poetic. Well, poetic. fighters talk about that all the time. That like, especially a counter shot. Like they land something and they don't even have any idea they're going to do it and they did it and then it, it caused the knockout. It's yeah. their training manifests itself in this one special beautiful moment where bang, this thing happens and then they see the guy drop and like holy shit. Oh yeah. And then they they walk away and it's the work. It's it's there's so many things involved, right? There's so many moving pieces. You have to be working on your own mind to learn how to get out of your own way. You also have to be like really engrossed in whatever the activity is that you're doing, like obsessed, in love with it, passionate about it. And then you have to have the discipline to show up and actually do the work. There's so many different moving pe- – and it all has to be managed. And it's not solid. It's like, a, it's like a fucking raft on the ocean. It's moving around. You're always trying to like figure out how to keep it – Keep it moving and, and functional. And it always seems unmanageable. And after it's over, you're like, oh, how the fuck does that even work? <laughs> uh, yeah, we call it the fader board. Ah, uh, yeah. That weird thing. Right. Like, you know, how do you get it all? And uh, honestly, particularly in the last 15 years when I started really taking martial arts seriously, half the stuff that I've been able to do right in my creative life are principles that I learned on the mat with my Sifu. Mm. You know, guard your center. Uh, keep your eye on the lead elbow. Um, get to the blind side. You know. How often do you do that? Uh, I started. I think I'm in the fifteenth or sixteenth year. Uh, Sifu was over the day before yesterday. So you know, a bunch of times a week. And if I'm working on something or if he can make it to location, we'll have long stretches where we're doing it every day. Then there's gradings. So you got to prep for those, you know. Mm -hmm. It's – So what are you doing? Are you doing kung fu? Like is it a very particular particular uh, style? Traditional Wing Chun. Really? Yeah, which is – Very underrated art form. Yes. Also, so many trade secrets and so different than – how I see it when I'm looking at videos in that in UFC, everything is out in the open and it's discussed and you see in a lot of the, the Eastern stuff, there was a turf wars and we're not really going to show them Mm -hmm. our footwork. We're not going to do this. So, but anyway, it's been a real deep dive with my Sifu, Eric Oram, who's Sifu, my Sigung is uh, grandmaster William Chung renowned kind of Hong Kong rooftop fights, all that stuff. Amazing lore, but very technical, difficult to build and easy to use. You know, uh, it's, you very rarely see that in the UFC, but one of the best fighters in the UFC uses it regularly. Tony, uh, Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson uses trapping hands. The Mook Jung. Yeah. Yeah. He, he grabs wrists and comes over the top with elbows. He does straight Wing Chun. He does it all the time. And he even practices on a wooden, wooden dummy. Yeah. I got my ass kicked by a wooden dummy for about three years. And then I finally understood the principle of uh, don't fight force with force. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just nuts. So anyway, half the time, if I would be in a, a critical artistic situation i would just say um because wing chun problems are life problems life problems are wing chun problems and i would just go back to how did this kind of relate to because i don't like getting clocked and getting my teeth knocked in because we tend to sometimes we glove up but we're not wearing mouthpieces it's very uh why do you wear a mouthpiece it's certainly not because he's very good at pulling his punches and he's also even better at making sure that i don't accidentally hit him but we get as close as, as we can to what the, the real uh, experience would be. But again, it's like everything. I'm sure uh, 
you know, a few clicks back down the road, there's things that instructors were doing that would be considered illegal to do to a group of students nowadays. Yeah, for sure. So not just a few clicks while I was coming up. That's what I, that's yeah. what I would imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's yeah, they'd hit each other. Yes, <laughs> students would get beat up. Yes, it was a normal thing. <laughs> yes. Um, 